Now before we start, what I would suggest is that we draw a diagram. Well I've started that here, I've drawn the bench PS and marked in the points Q and R that we're given where the supports are. Now because it's a uniform plank, the weight is going to act in the middle. And we're told that the mass of the plank is 20 kilograms, so that means that the weight is going to be 20 g newtons, acting downwards at the centre. Now the length was in fact, we're told, 2.4 metres. So if we've got 0.4 metres and 0.4 metres here, that leaves us with 1.6 metres and that's got to be halved. So what I'm going to do is just mark in that this length here, this side is 0.8 metres and this side here is 0.8 metres. That's the distance from here to R and the distance from here to Q. Okay. Now because the plank is resting on supports there's going to be an upward reaction Okay, so we're going to have upward forces, a reaction here, and we're going to have a reaction here. So I'll use the letter R, but the two reactions at the moment appear to be the same if I just label them R. So I'm going to call this the reaction at Q by writing a subscript. Remember Newtons, and the same here will be the reaction at R, and that will be in Newtons. What else have we got? Well, we've got uh, Arthur is sitting in the middle here, so he's got a weight of 60, well I should say he's got a mass of 60 kilograms, so therefore his weight's going to be 60 G Newtons, so that's going to also be added to this force down here. So what I'll do is I'll just put plus 60 G Newtons, and that relates to Arthur. Okay, so just put that in there, Arthur. Okay. We've also got Beatrice, who's got a mass of 40 kilograms, and she sits at P. So there's going to be a weight downwards, okay, Beatrice's weight, and that's going to be 40 G Newtons. Okay, well, I feel that we've got everything marked in now on this plank or bench, and our job is to find out what these reactions are at Q and at R. Now, the question's worth seven marks, so that means there's obviously quite a lot of work to do, a lot of stages in the problem. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is want to resolve upwards. I'm going to resolve upwards, create an equation. I'm also then going to take moments about a particular point. So I create two equations and you'll see that there's two unknowns involved. So that'd be sufficient to solve the equation simultaneously. So if we resolve upwards, we've got RQ plus R at R, and then we've got these two forces acting downwards in the negative sense then, so we've got minus 40G, and well we might as well total these, this is 80G, so we've got minus 80G, and because the bench is in equilibrium, the overall resultant force must be zero. So if I add 40G and 80G to the other side, or, or both sides, I'm going to get RQ plus RR equals 80G plus 40G, which is 120G. So two unknowns, so I can't solve it yet. I'm going to need simultaneous equations, so I'm going to call this equation 1. Now my next equation is going to be derived from taking moments. And you can take moments about P, Q, the center point here, R or S. It's up to you. But it's best to take moments about either Q or R because it means that if you take them about Q, this force won't enter the equation. Or if you take them about R, this force will not enter the equation. 
I'm going to take moments about R, but I leave it up to you. You can experiment and see what your equations come out to. You should be able to get exactly the same answers as I do. Taking moments about R, we need to have a sense, and I'm going to take the clockwise direction as being positive. So in other words then, what this leads to is if we look at this force first of all, RQ, it's going to want to turn the bench about R in a clockwise direction. So it's going to be a positive moment. A moment is the force times the perpendicular distance to the point that we're turning about. So it'll be RQ multiplied by this distance here which is going to be 1.6 meters. So we just put 1.6 in. Now we'll look at the turning effect produced by the 40 G force. This will be 40 G times this distance across here. 0 0.4 plus 0.8 plus 0.8, a total distance of 2 meters. And this 40 G would want to turn about R in this direction, anti-clockwise. So therefore it's going to be minus 40 G multiplied by the distance 2. Now we come on to this force. Again this will want to turn it about R in an anti-clockwise direction, so it would be negative. And the moment would be the force 80 G times the distance to R, which would be 0 0.8. So we've got 80 G multiplied by the distance 0 0.8. Now that's all the forces that we need to consider because the moment that this force R at R has about R is zero. It has no turning effect because it passes through the turning point. So because the bench is in equilibrium, that there is no overall resulting turning effect, then this will equal zero. So what we can do is just simplify this and solve for RQ. So we've got 1.6 RQ and then we've got minus 80G and minus 80G times 0.8 is minus 64. G and that equals zero. If I add these two terms to both sides and then divide by 1.6 you end up with RQ equaling 144G all divided by 1.6. If you do that what you get is 90G or if you take G as 9.8 you get 882 newtons. So that is the reaction at Q. All we need to do is find the reaction at R. And what we can do is put this value or 90 G into equation 1. So if we say that, if we sub RQ equaling 882 newtons into equation 1 and because I'm running out of room here it's not too hard to see that RR the reaction at R is going to be 120 G minus RQ minus the 90 G which is 882 Working in terms of G, that's going to be clearly 30 G. And if you pass 9.8 for G into your calculator, 30 times 9.8 gives you 294. 294 newtons then. So you have the reaction at Q, 882 newtons, and the reaction at R, 294 newtons. Okay, so hope you've been able to follow that. And that brings us to the end of part A.